From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Our top story this evening, after over three weeks of trial, attorneys were called in to hear the reading of the verdict this afternoon in the attempted murder trial of Fairbanks man Norman Beverly. 54-year-old Beverly was found not guilty on 12 of the 15 charges he faced, including a single count of kidnapping. However, the jury announced earlier this afternoon they were deadlocked on three of those counts, including Beverly's most serious charge of attempted murder. Superior Court Judge Michael McConaughey declared a mistrial for those three counts. A hearing will be held in March for both sides to determine what will happen next in the case. Beverly and his supporters said they were happy with the verdict. I'm feeling that God <laughs> has stepped in and took over and made the truth be seen. And that's how I feel. I, I got some great friends that believe in God and the, my mother always believed in me. And God knows the truth. I would not hurt no one. Anybody who knows me that knows I will never ever try to hurt anyone. The Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly voted to steer one million dollars toward funding continuation of the wood stove change out program. That was last night but it took until this morning for the body to come to a vote on its air quality control ordinance. Jamie Schwartzwald reports. It's only 12.15, so I mean, we're just into Friday morning at the moment. Presiding Officer Carl Castle donning a referee sweater as discussion on the borough's plan to regulate wood burning stretched into this morning. The body continued its laundry list of amendments to an ordinance that was introduced some six weeks ago and aims to curb the area's particulate pollution issue. The assembly voted to increase in size the air quality control zone, adding parcels to the area that was created two weeks ago. Another change to the working document allowed for bonfires, camp fires and ceremonial fires during level two and three air quality episodes. And I don't think they are the source of our problem. They are, it is the consistent burning that is the source. Stage three alerts will be issued when particulate matter reaches 55 micrograms per meter. That's down from 75 in the original document. Also, a notion brought up by North Pole City Mayor Bryce Ward and introduced by Lance Roberts allows borough approved burning devices to be operated within the air quality control zone when temperatures dip colder than 15 below at the Fairbanks International Airport, regardless of the level of PM 2.5 that's in the air. Finally, just before 1 a.m., the the assembly voted 7-2 to approve the ordinance. Those who voted in support called the measure a compromise. I believe that this is a balanced ordinance that uh, takes into account uh, both sides. It's something that we should do. It's a really good start, even though it's far from perfect. I think we all were in agreement that there were areas of this borough that need to be targeted, and this ordinance does do that. Not one assembly member is sitting here going, yeah, this is what I wanted. We're all disappointed. There is no perfect answer to this, but it's not just about uh, an economic issue in terms of burning wood. It's, it's, a, it's mostly about a health issue. Assemblyman Roberts and Guy Santley voted against passage. Failure of Proposition 2, the home heating initiative in last fall's municipal election, allowed the assembly to bring the ordinance forward. Roberts expressed disappointment while guaranteeing another initiative during the next election cycle. That the voters were giving a chance to do something that would unite the community to solve the problem. What this has done is it's really going to create more division. This is a divisive ordinance and what has been ensured is that there will be an initiative or referendum on the ballot this fall. All right, when we come back, we have more on the scam we reported about yesterday in Fairbanks. Also, it's time for the annual Tired Iron. People are digging out their vintage snow machines and heading to the China. Those stories are next. Stay with us. And welcome back. Trial continued in Superior Court today for the Fairbanks man accused of raping, beating, and kidnapping his 18-year-old pregnant girlfriend in 2013. Leo Huntington is charged with multiple counts of felony assault, sexual assault, and kidnapping. Trial began Tuesday with opening arguments, and today the alleged victim took the stand. Fairbanks Superior Court Judge Michael McDonald would not allow cameras to film the emotional testimony. According to the victim, Huntington kidnapped and raped her at his China Ridge home. She said Huntington was intoxicated and repeatedly beat her during the near nine-hour incident. Trial is set to continue into next week. Recreational winter drivers, young and old, are firing up their vintage snow machines for the 2015 Fairbanks Tired Iron Race this weekend. 
The Tired Iron runs this Saturday and Sunday on the Chena River and downtown Fairbanks. The public is invited to see old snow machines, some of them made in the 1930s, racing with Fairbanks citizens who are just as elderly. Some participants are over 90 years old. Family-friendly events will also be held on the ice, including moose nugget bowling and special visits from Disney characters. Plus, there will be plenty of food and drink. Event organizer Craig Campo says the event is held annually to raise money for nonprofit organizations in the interior. He says this year's Tired Iron is supporting the Fairbanks, the Food Bank of Alaska. Now we moved it back up river again for safety because the ice is much better above the hot water, the power plant. So the ice has been tested, it's drilled, it's good. The, uh, the event takes place right there above the Cushman Street Bridge. That's where 90% of the activities are gonna take place. We've got the local version of the Disney Frozen characters will be there to have pictures taken with the kids. You can bring some dried food or canned food for the food bank and it doesn't cost you anything. And then we have the big ping pong ball drop. That's gonna be really fun. We told you yesterday about a scam reported in Fairbanks. Monty Bowen has more about that story tonight in this report. A Fairbanks woman got a call yesterday from a man who told her she had won a publisher's clearinghouse prize. Well, I was called and informed by a gentleman with a foreign accent that I was the lucky winner of $855,000 and a 2015 Red Dodge Durango. Mary, who asked that we not use her last name, is a senior citizen. She was directed to go to Walmart and then call back for further instructions. We drove her there and she called them back. Yeah, it was to pick up a check for $855,000 and a, a, a Red Durango. Congratulations. You're going down there to take care of your receipt the shipping and handling fee, they will charge you for the shipping and handling fee. The government, they have charged you for that. So you have to take care of that of the Western Union, okay? How much is that? It is only for $350, okay? $350. That is correct. Wait a minute. That's not how I saw them award publishers prizes on TV. If you're one of the winners of those prizes, one of the major prizes of $10,000 or more, our prize patrol will show up at your house, at your apartment, wherever you live, unannounced, uh, with our famous uh, van and the champagne and the flowers and the big check. Uh, we, we don't tell people we're coming ahead of time, and the commercials that you see on TV are actually what happens. You never have to pay any amount to collect your prize. No taxes, no customs fee, nothing. It's free, yours, with nothing to pay ahead of time. And that's how you really know the difference between a real publisher's clearinghouse prize and a scam. Mary called us, wanting to get the word out because she didn't want one of her friends or neighbors to become a victim. So people, please beware. You know, I know I could use a thousand dollars, eight hundred fifty-five thousand. Anybody would want. So don't fall for this. So remember, if you get a phone call from publishers, it's a scam. Just hang up. This is Money Bowen reporting. All right, Joe Cook is up next with hoops highlights and the surprise for one basketball player that was probably better than a win. All that scam free next. <laughs> Welcome back into your sports fans. Joe Cook here to get your weekend started with some Friday sports. The UAF women's basketball team got a huge win last night going up against the Yellow Jackets of MSUB. The Manics were one game behind them for the final postseason berth. Alaska was up 27-25 at the half, but they outscored MSUB by 17 points in the second half despite a game-high 24 points from Kaylin Goggins. Alaska's Kaylee Joel did it all, scoring 20 points, grabbing 10 boards and 3 steals. Jordan Wilson, her second game back from injury, scored 20 points in 35 minutes. UAF, they win 74-55, and they are still in the playoff hunt with one game left in the regular season. It's great to know that uh, my coaches, my teammates trust me enough to, to give me that amount of minutes uh, coming back from injury. and I knew I was just going to do what I could to get the get the win, but yeah, it feels great. This team's made a lot of history. You know, we're going to at worst finish with a 500 season, which hasn't happened in, in maybe a decade here at UAF, um, with the potential to still go to playoffs. 
and the winning was contagious at the Patty Center. The men's squad, they took on the St. Martin Saints, and this would be a thriller of a seesaw game. Alaska was ahead just 36-35 at the break, and the Saints, they scored the final five points to force this game into overtime. Trey Igman scored a game-high 27 points with six steals for the Saints. But UAF was balanced. Almir Hadjasevich led five nanics in double figures with 20 points and nine boards. Anthony Reese's line was 10 points, 32 rebounds, and eight assists. That went to the big man. Alaska ends their two-game skid with an 82-78 win in overtime over the Saints. Five swimmers will represent Alaska at the national championships next month, but they were recognized as a team on a national level. This week, the swim team is ranked seventh in the country out of all Division II swimming programs with a 3.49 GPA. The national rankings are based on the fall semester, and they are presented by the College Swimming Coaches Association of America. Majors on the team range from foreign language, poli sci to psychology and anthropology. The national championships start March 11th in Indianapolis. A few former players with interior ties also earned accolades this week. West Valley grad Lorenzo Graham is a Coast Conference South first team pick for West Valley College. He averaged 16.3 points per game and 26 starts. Lathrop product Casey Duffield is the Iowa Community College Athletic Conference Softball Player of the Week in a six-game roadie. Duffield hit four doubles, a homer, five ribbies, and allowed one earned in a complete game in a 4-2 win. Northern Michigan's Megan Edick and Michigan Tech's Kyle Hansen, also of Lathrop fame, were named to the All-Central Collegiate Ski Association's second team. And here's a recap of more senior night basketball for interior teams. Let's see what happened on Thursday night. We start at Boylu Hall for senior night. The Rams wore pink in honor of the late Bev Fantasi as they recognized their seven seniors, two on the girls' team and five on the boys' team before their games. The girls put forth a spirited effort against visiting Galena. Andy Clark led the Rams with 13 points, but the Hawks would win 50-32, powered by Romay Harris's 23-point night. In the boys' game, Monroe does what Monroe does. They enjoyed a 49-29 lead at the half. Senior guard Jalen McCullough went off for a game-high 32 points for Monroe. In doing so, he scored his 1,000th career point. The Rams win 79-56 over Galena. At Lathrop High School, the Malamutes recognized eight seniors, two on the girls' team and six for the boys. Curtis White Jr.'s mom moved to California while he finished up his senior year at Lathrop and surprised them before the game. Great surprise, man. I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, really boosted my confidence. I love seeing her and I miss her a lot. The girls will roll on senior night with a 59-4 win over North Pole. The Patriots would nearly spoil Lathrop's senior night in the boys' game. Shane Hurst scored a game-high 20 points and 11 rebounds, and they led 15-12 after one. But the Mutes would go on a 15 to six run in the second quarter and they will lead by at least six points in the second half and they will go on to win this one 74 54 on senior night led by whites 15 points they work hard uh they're scrappy on defense and uh we just kept battling back uh our guys held in it and uh we just kept playing and put away in the third also on Thursday, the West Valley girls are 22-0 after beating Bartlett 55-39. Despite Darian Hornbuckle's game-high 34 points, the Wolfpack lose 72-76 to Bartlett. The Wolfpack wrap up the regular season in Palmer tonight. Interior sports fans have spoken, and after the votes have been counted up, here's your play of the week. Senior guard Jalen McCullough, who you just saw, he gets the weekly honor for his head-scratcher of a layup that somehow gets the roll and the bounce and everything else. He beat Brent Sass by just two votes this week for the play of the week. That was two of Jalen's 19 points and a 20-point win over the Hutchinson Hawks on a road game earlier this week. To pick the next play of the week, watch over the I-5 and tell your top five plays on Mondays during the weekend recap. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Welcome back, Daryl. Yes. Are you prepared for this Saturday storm? I don't know. You know, I, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, I've lived here all my life. Not going to worry about it. Not going to worry about it? Nope. Just be prepared. That's all. Be prepared. That's all you can do. And but you know who's the best person to check with? Mike, of course. Mike. He's at Ice Alaska right now uh, where they're still open and going to be open through the weekend. So we'll toss it over to Mike right now. Hey guys, it's a nice night out here and we have, I think, more families and kids having a great time that we had last night. And last night we were talking about the website, IceAlaska.com. We had a gentleman here talking about the YouTube uh, video that they put on here. Tonight, we have a gentleman here that's been with the Ice Alaska for quite a while. And if you go to IceAlaska.com and you look under the, the caption of uh, sculptures, underneath in small print, you'll see photos and webcams and this is Don Swarner and Don you've been doing for the webcams here for how long? Well full time now 10 years. We got maybe, maybe 11. And then how did it all actually all start out? How did I get started? Well, yeah with, with, the, with the Ice Alaska. My wife. <laughs> I got drug in by my wife. <laughs> yep. 
And if I wanted to see her during the month of March, I had to be down here working. Yeah. Well, obviously, you love you love with your job here. You love it's, putting these things together. It's a blast. I, you know, all the artists from all around the world, the the various cultures. It's just, it's really, it's really a neat experience. And it's come quite a ways as far as technology since when you first started, right? Our webcams. We started out doing webcam updates of five minutes apart, and this year we've moved them up to 30 second updates. And the system is working so well, we may get it faster, but we'll see. So we have 30 cams operating right now, right? They were as of last night, and uh, uh, and now we've moved them. Today was moving day, and, and we lost a day on moving day, and, and now they're going over to the multi-block. Tomorrow morning I'll have 18 up and running on multi-block. So, so once, we did run 30, yes. So once again, go to IceAlaska.com and look that up, and you'll see webcams showing the uh, sculptors hard at work. Thanks a lot, Don. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at the weather right now and see what's going on as far as what's what's happening. It's not too bad out there, like I said. And uh, as far as our photograph for today, this one's sent in by Canaan St. Rose. The sun peeking over the horizon. A beautiful shot once again. Uh, gorgeous colors and a, really a cool shot there. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send it to photos at ktvf11.com. How about the uh, Almanac? 24 degrees, our high day 25, and the low last night 9, record high 45, 1928, 51 below in 1932, sunrise and sunset, over 10 hours of daylight, 10 hours and 1 minute to be exact. Now let's go with that satellite and radar and show you what's going on there, and we have quite a bit to talk about. First of all, we have one small system coming in from the southwest, but look up to the northwest, you see a big mass of white clouds. That is a, a really powerful storm system that's going to be moving across the interior, bringing with it a lot of wild weather. We'll tell you more about that in just a little, little bit. But speaking of weather across the rest of the state, here's what it looks like. Over southeast Alaska, a nice day at Ketchikan, 46 degrees there, sunny skies. Partly cloudy skies in Anchorage, 29. A little rain falling around Kodiak, 37. 43 at Cold Bay. Up and down the west coast, uh, pretty nice in Nome. More snow on the way for those folks. Up on the north slope, it's cloudy at Barrow. And just partly cloudy in Fort Yukon. Lower 48 weather. Again, we're talking about some more cold temperatures and snow falling. Dallas, Fort Worth, almost four inches of snow today. And the rains have stopped over the west coast. Maybe some uh, showers around the Los Angeles area. But the, the main storm system shows up really good on the satellite and radar. And we'll t once again talk about uh, pictures of pink and greens and things like that. Look at all the pink moving across Texas and Arkansas into uh, Mississippi and uh, yeah, even Kansas and, and Missouri. So all of them getting really, really hit pretty good. The jet stream for early next week, once again, diving way down to the south over Southern California, pulling all that cold air in and across the Great Lakes while showers are expected over the deep south. Okay, back to Alaska for tomorrow's forecast. We've got a lot to talk about. Some blowing snow for Barrow. Snow diminishing in Nome, chance of snow for Fort Yukon. In the uh, central sections here where we're located, we're looking at uh, clouds and snow developing with winds for Fairbanks and Healy, cloudy in Delta Junction over southeast Alaska. Maybe a little rain in the forecast, possibly, as you can see here, uh, developing late at Ketchikan. Over to the southwest we go. Again, we're looking at a change in weather for there, uh, mainly rain for Cold Bay, rain likely at Kodiak, and a chance of snow for Bethel. And in the... Uh, South Central sections around the Anchorage Bowl, they're even looking at snow in the forecast with rain and snow at Homer. Okay, time real quickly for our Alaska, our, our kids' weather. And uh, this week we've been talking with the kids from Weller. Tonight, here's the teacher with a cool weather fact. Hi, this is Mrs. Roth, and this is my fourth grade class at Weller Elementary School. And we have a weather fact to share with you. Class, did you know that winds have carried dust from the Sahara Desert in Africa all the way westward to England and even further to Illinois. What? Wow. Thanks again, as always, to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather. Next week, we'll be visiting with the kids from Wood River Elementary School. Real quickly, our uh, winter trails report, not the greatest outlook for the weekend, as snow and strong winds will be the rule into Sunday. Snow will cover the trails and will probably be wet, so just be safe wherever you're doing your outdoor activities. Real quickly, our forecast, partly cloudy, then becoming mostly cloudy, Tonight, 6 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast, here's where it all starts to change. Snow and winds developing by afternoon, 28 degrees. And our winter weather storm forecast, here's what it looks like. Winds gusting to 45 miles per hour, drifting across the roads. Power outage is possible and clearing by Sunday. Back to you guys. 
Yeah, so everybody needs to prepare for that just in absolutely, case. Absolutely, absolutely. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, Congress looks at ways to deal with funding Homeland Security. That's next with Lester Holt. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime. WebCenter11.com. From all of us here at the News Center, have a great weekend.